with County Board of Supervisors meeting to order. Note that we do have a quorum. If you would please rise for Pastor Jonathan Hammond of the Grace Lutheran and St. Paul Lutheran Church as he provides the invocation. Begin uh, with a brief passage from a letter written 500 years ago in another time of pandemic. I shall ask God mercifully to protect us, then I shall fumigate, help purify the air, minister medicine, and take it. I shall avoid places and persons where my presence is not needed in order not to become contaminated and thus perchance inflict and pollute others, and so cause their death as a result of my negligence. If my neighbor needs me, however, I shall not avoid place or person. I will go freely as stated above. See, this is such a God-fearing faith because it is neither brash nor foolhardy and does not tempt God. I said those words were written by Martin Luther 500 years ago in a time of pandemic. Let us pray. O oh God, you call to us in the midst of everything that is happening around us, offering us peace, comfort, and hope in the midst of this global health pandemic. We give you thanks for your promised love, grace, and mercy. We give you thanks for the beauty of this place and the privilege we have to live here. In the midst of these uncertain pandemic times, we pray that you would guide and lead us in all that we do in the decisions we make, in all that we say. We pray that you would guide and lead us, that we may follow the necessary health guidelines, that we would do all we can to keep one another safe, that we would take seriously all that is happening around us, and that we would mourn with those who have died, especially those who have died to, to the COVID-19. We pray that you would help us to support those who are sick, and especially those who continue to suffer from the lingering effects. In the midst of these uncertain times, we pray that you would guide and lead us to do all that we can, to think more about others than we do about ourselves, to put aside our selfish and narcissistic ways that lead us to make decisions that are not mindful of the whole community. We pray that you would guard us and keep us, that we may continue to be the people who look after one another and who support our neighbors as we would wish to be supported. Guide the decisions of this board this night. Enable fruitful conversations that are civil and productive. Lead those who are here to partake in the discussions to bring forth ideas and conversations that build up the whole community with concern for and in hope, and hope in a shared future where justice is truly for all people and righteousness flows with everlasting strength. We give you thanks for all the good things and look forward to that day when our lives are restored. We live in fear no more. And we, look, look, we can look to the future with hope in all that is to come. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda is citizens' time. First person we have signed up to speak is Miss Susan Branscombe. Mm -hmm. giving us this time as y'all know I spoke with y'all on our concerns about the solar the last time that I was here because solar so new we don't know a lot about the impacts of what's going to occur with it and I spoke with a DEQ representative yesterday and he said that with county is responsible for the stormwater soil and water conservation in with county for the erosion and we already know that one of the areas in the gully has some erosion issues to it already if they have to build a road into it, they're going to have to remove trees, they're going to have to remove some rocks, and they're going to have to do some grading on it. So we are concerned about some of the erosion with it. The other thing that he talked about with me, because we are an area who is, who is rich in mining, was there a carved study done for the caves and the mines that are in the area because there are endangered species that are habitat mines and caves for the area, and also due to the fact that we have um, areas that tend to fall in from the mines so those were one of the things that he talked about the other thing that he talked about that I hadn't really thought about was the public safety law do we have an extensive enough fire department to take care of a solar fire farm and if you look on the news in California there was a 1200 acre farm called fire on a solar farm caused by a bird. so that was one of the things that he talked about is needing the fire department in case there is a fire on the solar farm because of the panels, because of what they're made from, 
all of those types of things because it takes quite a feat to, to uh, take a fire out from that. And another thing that he talked about is the county, because this is new, the Middle Peninsula Planning Commission has conditional use permits that the county can review to see what they are doing with the solar farms. And he said that the county can enact conditional use permits and that you all can take the time to review those and to see what works to protect the resources, your community and your land from the solar farms. And I hope that you all will take some time to review this since it is so new because you all are our board of supervisors and you all are responsible for taking care of our resources, our land and our community and our safety. And I thank you all for your time with us. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the list is Miss Betty Blair. I haven't done enough so I, I really am thankful that she has looked into this um, I know the project the first year is going to employ a lot of people to get it started but then after that not many people are going to be employed there um, the trees that will be cut could cause problems uh, my bottom on my farm already already has a big ditch and over the years, it keeps getting deeper, which is really a problem. Uh, and of course, that runoff ends up in New River. Uh, nothing's really been said about the pipeline. There is a pipeline on both of these properties. And it's a natural, pot, natural gas pipeline. And we just had we just had an earthquake. And it was a pretty good one, I understand. The first one we've had in about 100 years. And uh, that can never reach a pipeline. So I don't think we need to be in a real big hurry. We need to really think about this. And uh, what I've read, I guess I've read more than negative. Uh, about about this so uh, I don't know if you folks have talked to people in the community about how they feel um, and also I'm afraid that you know if this one goes through there's going to be a lot more and we're going to be sorry one day so I thank you folks thank you Ms. Blair. thank you next on the list and is it Eloise Turner. Turner? It's not your handwriting, it's my eyesight. Hey, listen, I can't write. <laughs> the Lord never blessed me with that. Now, he got figures in my head, but he never gave me no pencil work. <laughs> so, first of all, I would like to thank you, Mr. Chairman, and the board for letting us come up here. And over the past week, I have been very fortunate that all of the commissioners came to my farm, including Mr. McRoberts. We had maps, we showed you every, every solar panel is going to be put on this farm. We showed you where all the system bases would be to catch the water. We showed you everything. We have the natural gas line. I've got more than anybody in the world because I've got the four cut off valves that tell you because I don't know how many of you all here remember, but in 2000 or 2002, they were going to put the gas fired power plant on my farm back there. And the problem with that is they could not, and you all can look it up, Duke Power, so they cut put all the valves, all the stuff. Duke Power could not find a place to cool the jets, because you know you gotta cool the jets. So that was the problem with that. So um, I was fortunate, so I, I just want to not tell you all that uh, the, I am lost my stuff anyway, and uh, you know, the Planning Commission, they all voted for this, except, you know, they, they agreed to go ahead and do this. And I'm here tonight to ask you, because we were in accord with the comprehensive plan, and I'm here to ask you all tonight to affirm the, the decision. And I think that no one can realize just how deep my farm goes back to where it's not to the public. And I have a box in my truck, and I'll be glad to bring it in with a letter 
where these people paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for archaeological people to go through there to make sure they have checked this farm out and I want to donate them to Wythe County Museum. They went through it from one end to the other. I have the letter, I'll be glad to bring it in. So there, I know there's not no danger. And uh, the bottom lease currently rent my farm. It's a dry land farm because it's a dry land farm. I have no running water. I'm a mile and a half from the New River. I have no running water. I wish I did. My mother would roll over in her grave. She always told me, if you don't have running water, don't buy it. Well, this is a dry land farm. I have a pump, and I have to pump all the water that ever went to any cattle on that farm. The pump was put in 1950. So I'm not worried about, I don't know how you get runoff if you ain't got no water. Well, anyway, they rent my farm, but they only rent it for a year at a time. I've had this farm for 25 years. I was 70 years old, and I can't farm it. So I don't have no, I think this is the greatest thing that ever happened to Wythe County. I will have, you know, I'll know where my life goes from here. So will Miss Lindy Moon. So will her children. This farm will start out, we had people here last night that were handing out cards saying, you know what, we want to work. So we're, we want you to do that. Right now, my farm taxes are $2,800 a year. That's what my property taxes are to you all. You all are gonna receive over $100,000. The 85 come in if you put it back in, in, you know, like home use or something. You can't build a home. I have 28 of those mega transformers on my farm. Every time they come through to change, so I live on Electric Lane, and I think this is the greatest project that ever happened that's hit in Wythe County that's going to give you all good revenue, good work, and you all are going to blaze a trail for the future. And I thank you very much for your time. And also, I have a, a little farm in North Carolina that has a 35-acre solar farm on it. It was put in 2014. The cattle graze all around it. I, I don't, I've never had any problem, period. The sheep graze under it because they can water it. So it's very unharmful to animals. So I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Next up is Mr. <coughs> John Matthews. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. I'm John Matthews, the Associate Director for the Joint Industrial Development Authority. As the Economic Development Agency for Wythe County, Withville, and Rural Retreat, we work diligently to market and attract the industry, new industry to Wythe County. Over the last several months, our office has been working with Savian Energy to locate their project here in Wythe County. The installation will hook directly into the grid at one of Appalachian Power's largest substations in the system. We support the project and believe it aligns with the comprehensive plan for Wythe County by growing and diversifying our economic future and by strengthening the appeal of our community to business and industrial prospects. Access to clean energy has be become a priority to many of the companies that are interested in locating with County. The project op also offers benefits such as job creation, growing our tax base, and improving the quality of life. We're excited to increase the county's marketing potential with this project and look forward to uh, further economic growth. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you, Mr. Matthew. That's all we have signed up for citizens' time. I'll close citizens' time. Moving on with the agenda. Next list is, or next on the agenda is public hearing for their proposed parking ordinance. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I'll read the <clears throat> public notice in compliance with the Code of Virginia and amendments there too. The Wythe County Board of Supervisors will conduct a public hearing to consider an ordinance entitled Parking Order Ordinance of Wythe County, Virginia. The Board of Supervisors will hear comments from citizens concerning the proposed ordinance. The public hearing will be held Tuesday, August 11th, 2020 at 6 p.m. in the boardroom of the Wythe County Office Building, 340 South 6th Street, Wythville, Virginia. A copy of the proposed ordinance is on file in the county administrator's office located at 340 South 6th Street, Withfield, Virginia, for public review or online at www.withco.org. I didn't see anybody signed up to speak for the public hearing on the parking ordinance. Is there anybody would like to speak? Hearing none, I'll close citizens' time. Mr. Bear. Mr. 
in ordinance earlier in the year you all discussed that we postponed the public hearing uh, due to the coronavirus uh, earlier this year um, the primary intent of this ordinance is within our industrial park we have areas where we have truck drivers parking pull them off the side of the road uh, even sometimes uh, pulling things out of the back of the trailers and things like that uh, this gives us the ability to uh, Put no parking signs up there with stronger enforcement penalties of uh, up to $100. Um, and uh, recommendation from staff would be uh, Board of Supervisors so desire to adopt this ordinance. And is there, we don't have to wait any time. On, yes, sir. Aaron, that entertain a motion to adopt the parking ordinance. So moved. Have a motion, have a second. Second. Any questions or discussion? Mr. Chairman, I uh, would just ask to make an effective date. I don't care if it's today, today or if we make it September 1st, however you'd like to do it. If whoever made the motion will just add an effective date on that. Come on. Come on. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> I'll mean, my motion to <coughs> have a motion that. to second to uh, approve effective midnight tonight, August 12th, 2020. Does that prompt any more questions or discussion? Here, now we'll do a roll call vote, Mr. Smith. Aye. 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 So approved. Seems like that one's been on the back burner for years. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's COVID time. Moving on to payment of invoices. <coughs> Entertain a motion to pay the invoices. So moved. Have a motion, have a second. Second. Is there any invoice any supervisor wishes to pull out or discuss? Here now we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Terry. Aye. 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 So approved. Next on the agenda, agenda is the approval of the minutes from the previous meeting, July 28, 2020. <coughs> Entertain a motion to approve. Have a motion, have a second. Any questions or corrections? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Smith. Aye. 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 So approved. Next item is on the agenda is old business. We have the Savion Energy Comprehensive Plan Accord Determination. I believe everybody received a letter from the Planning Commission. I'll let Mr. Bear summarize that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I, I welcome any comments from Vice Chair Lawson, who attended the meeting last night as well. But the uh, Planning Commission met last night, well, they, they met a week ago and recessed uh, until last night to continue their discussion <clears throat> on determining substantial accord. Um, they had a, uh, uh, they call it a very good uh, debate and deliberation and discussion back and forth between the Planning Commission members uh, last night um, d discussing the project. Uh, and as the letter <coughs> indicates, uh, they did uh, end up voting five to two uh, that the project, uh, that they deemed the project to be in substantial accord with the comprehensive plan. Uh, and the letter was written to relay that information to you. Uh, and I will let Mr. Farthing speak. He's also, I believe, sent you all an email as well uh, regarding this. Mr. Chairman, I, um, I, in the email, I just kind of outlined what the code section allows uh, you to do at this point. You've received your notice from the Planning Commission. Um, you can take no action. You can overrule what the Planning Commission decision was. Um, essentially, your two choices. Um, if you make that decision this evening, um, whether you want to have some kind of affirmative action taken by the board to um, agree with the Planning Commission or agree not to take any action uh, because you're in agreement with the Planning Commission decision. Um, there's no, 
time limit in this code section that requires you to take action immediately when you receive the letter. So if, if you want time to digest that information and talk about the next meeting, that's up to you all. Um, I'm available for questions if you have questions. Open the floor for questions, discussion. questions further um, for what I guess basically the planning commission how they came to their decision anything what were the two <clears throat> do we know why the two voted no well I can't speak for them but what I can say is there was some discussion um, within the comprehensive plan it says um, you know that we want to push for economic development so several said this is economic you know this does help with economic development and then there's also a section that talks about farmland protecting the farmland and i like i said i can't speak for them but i believe they were leaning from just their conversations i believe they were leaning toward this does not protect the farmland in their opinion so they had like like mr bear said they had a, a very deep discussion you know they reconvened last night and that's when they voted the five to two. So I think everyone, I think the entire planning commission agreed if we had zoning, their conversations would have went a little different. But since we don't, they felt, you know, that this was, this, you know, this did fit with the <coughs> I will say they worked extremely hard to come up with their <laughs> final answer last night. They read it and um, thought about it for a week and did the site visit. So. We can table this for a month if we want. I would. I'm in agreement with that, Mr. Cook. I think we need to sit down and discuss it as a board because I've had a lot of opposition reach out to me for it. I'd like to know the pros and the cons a little bit more and, and digest it a little bit more before we make a decision. I'll put that in the form of a motion. I'd like to make a motion we table it. Have a motion to table till 30 days. For 30 for days. For a month. Have a motion to table table for 30 days. Have a second. Second. Any questions or discussion? I have a quick question. Mr. Bear, what does that do with our, is there any type of time frame or anything we need to know about? I uh, will let the county attorney address that. There's the code section is silent about time frames as far as you're getting a report you know from the planning commission uh, unless there's an appeal if someone were to uh, appeal that the landowner or the, if they were to appeal the decision of the planning commission which i don't anticipate happening in this case but um, there's a timeline for them and then the decision if an appeal is made um, which is 60 days for you to decide if an appeal is brought to you but there's no there's no timeline in there for you to, you know, accept the notice from the planning commission of what they did. Okay. And then you have some discretion whether you act or don't act. Well, I mean, if we, the way I understand it, <clears throat> we table for 30 days and we come back and we don't take any action at all. That's I think that says you agree with the planning commission. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Mr. Chairman, if, if you would, would you mind, Mr. Cook, clarifying the motion to either, it could be 30 days or it could either be brought back on the September 8th agenda or the September 22nd agenda? September 8th is fine. That gives, okay. gives time. Do we have a motion to <coughs> table until September the 8th? Yes, sir. Second. I still second that. Any, does that invoke any more questions or discussion? Here now we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Smith? Aye. 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 So tabled. Moving on the agenda to <coughs> new business. <coughs> Excuse me. Mr. Bear, the first one was on the list is the ready mix road rural edition but i believe yes after uh, some conversation uh that mr 
Chancellor and I had with uh, Ms. Heath um, this week, uh, I will request that you all not take any action on this. This was, this was the resolution to add the Ready Mix Road um, into the state system. Um, they are, um, VDOT is, is like for us to make a couple changes to this uh, and uh, take some action regarding the right of way. So if you all will just uh, pass this by, it'll be uh, on an upcoming meeting. Next is resolution 2020-26, the smart scale projects. And I'd ask Mr. Smith if he'll read that. With county resolution 2020-26, I-77 northbound truck climbing lane and US-52 at Apache Run realignment safety improvements. Whereas section 33.2-214.1 of the Code of Virginia as amended requires that the Commonwealth Transportation Board develop a prioritization process generally referred to as a smart scale based on an object, objective and qualif qualifiable analyst to consider as minimum uh, congestion mitigation, economic development, uh, accessibility, safety, and environmental quality. And whereas the current and future traffic patterns of Interstate, I, Interstate 77 northbound lanes from the intersection of Red Holler Road to I-81 interchange have a decreased level <coughs> of service because of variable traffic speeds due to the steep grade of the northbound lanes and whereas the truck climbing lanes will allow slower traffic to transition into the climbing lanes and allow for better flow of traffic with variable speeds and whereas improving improvements to realign Apache run at the US 52 intersection will improve safety at the intersection and allow deceleration lane at food country to be lengthened to allow safer transition into the parking lot now therefore be it resolved that the with county board of supervisors wholeheartedly endorse a smart scale app application for the safety improvements I-77 northbound truck climbing lanes and US-52 at Apache Run realignment safety improvements be it further resolved that the resolution be submitted with the smart scale application and a copy of this resolution be incorporated into official minutes of the Wythe County Board of Supervisors and the Wythe County Comprehensive, Comprehensive Plans amended to add both projects adopted this, day, this 11th day of August 2020 entertain a motion to wholeheartedly endorse <laughs> this resolution have a motion have a second second any questions or discussion i do think wholeheartedly was a good word when you deal with <laughs> 77. <clears throat> here now we'll do a roll call vote mr terry aye 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 aye, aye. aye. so approved next resolution is 2020-27 School Resource Officer Grant Program and Fund. Mr. Terry, if you'll read that one. Uh, yes, sir. With County Resolution 2020-27, Virginia School Resource Officer Grants Program and Fund. Whereas the Virginia School Resource Officer SRO Grant Fund Program uh, Program and Fund was established by the General Assembly in 1999 as a special non-reverting fund within the state treasury to employ uniformed school resource officers. And whereas the enabling legis legislation which created the SRO grants program and fund passed the Senate of Virginia 39-0 and the Virginia House of Delegates 89-0. And whereas the program funds school resource officer and school security officer positions salaries in elementary, middle, and high schools with a local match based on composite index. And whereas SROs have served a vital role in keeping our students, our faculty, and staff safe while developing positive relationships between students, law enforcement, and the broader community in Wythe County since 1999. And whereas in 2018, Wythe County received critical grant funding from the School Resource Officer Grants Program and Fund to assist in providing funds so that every public school in the locality can be covered by school resource officers. And whereas the absence of state funding will greatly reduce or eliminate our ability to post SROs in our schools. And whereas Governor Ralph Northam stated on June 13, 2019, that, quote, that in quotations, it is paramount that we continue to make smart investments to keep Virginia schools safe and to create supportive learning environments for our students. 
the school resource officers and school security officers hired throughout these grants not only make our schools safer, but also enhance our communities by building strong positive relationships with students, faculty, and parents, end quote. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Wood County Board of Supervisors does hereby request that Governor Ralph Northam, in conjunction with the Senate of Virginia and Virginia House of Delegates, maintain the existence of the School Resource Officer Grants Program and Fund with adequate funding therein, adopted this 11th day of August, 2020. Thank you, Mr. Terry. Mr. Baird, I know it's a little question. You want to summarize this one? <laughs> well, or do you I, want me to? Well, if, if you'd like to, you go right ahead. But um, I'll just, I, I will state that for the last uh, couple of years, we have gotten uh, funding through this for two of our school resource officers uh, to help us out, and it is critical that we keep that funding for our, for our SRAs. And just to add to that, this came from um, our senator, well, your senator, if you live on this side of 4th Street, uh, Todd Pillion, um, apparently there's a push going into the special called section session that starts the 18th um, to remove funding because they want to remove school resource officers. Um, and that's all I'll say about that. Any questions or could have a motion? <laughs> so move. Have a motion, have a second. Second. Any questions or discussion? I know Mr. Mayor was proud of me for shutting my mouth. <laughs> Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Smith? Aye. 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 So approved. Next on the list is Winnie with County Resolution 2020-28, Mount Rogers Planning District, District Commission, Commission Virginia Telemute telecommunication initiative whereas with county is located in southwest virginia and has been designated by the federal government as an appalachian regional commission county that is in a transitional phase and whereas thousands of with county residents do not currently have access to high-speed broadband and whereas the covid 19 pandemic and related quarantine has illustrated the reality that in the year 2020, high-speed broadband is a critical part of basic infrastructure. And whereas the lack of available high-speed broadband places places the elderly at risk by being unable to utilize telehealth opportunities, and whereas the lack of available high-speed broadband places a countless number of Wythe County students at a severe disadvantage as they are unable to adequately participate in distance learning Required during the ongoing pandemic and whereas the lack of available high-speed broadband prohibits many local businesses from expanding or reaching an even greater customer base now therefore be it resolved that the with County Board of Supervisors doth hereby resolve to support the joint grant application being submitted to the Virginia Department of Housing and Community Development by the counties of Washington Smith and with Adopted this 11th day of August 2020. Mr. Farthing, I mean, Mr. Baird, would you like to summarize? Certainly. As, as many of you all know, and you all talked about earlier this year, broadband was obviously one of the areas that we were um, really trying to focus on this year. We, uh, we put together a, a small committee uh, with some staff, school board, and others, and had some meetings with several providers uh, that provide service uh, in our area. Uh, this one provider, Point Broadband, uh, um, was extremely interested in working with us. They were in the process of working on some applications already uh, to apply for federal funding and also uh, VADI funding, the Virginia Telecommunication Initiative funding. Um, as many of you all know, Mr. Farley has uh, been working with sending letters around and getting letters of support for this project. Uh, we actually... Um, he uh, put a petition down, I believe, at the Speedwell Market and received maybe three full pages of signatures and three pages of signatures on the back of it from people in there. Uh, in this area, generally, the, the, this project generally serves the southwestern corner of the county, basically, and it's, it's, that's a, it's even more than that. But basically everything from Ivanhoe West, south of Withville, south of Rural Retreat. Uh, so uh, they... Also have projects in Washington Smith, 
they really feel that they have a very competitive application and really do feel like uh, they have an excellent chance of funding. So we wholeheartedly endorse you all adopting this resolution also. Have a motion to approve. So moved. Have a motion, have a second. second. Any questions or discussion? Just to show of hands, because we're going to make this interactive, raise your hand if you don't have reliable internet at your house. <laughs> Any other questions or discussion? Do a roll call vote, Mr. Smith. Aye. 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 So approved. Next on the agenda is building inspection, amend and appropriation request, Mr. Bayer. Yes, uh, and and this was not on uh, <coughs> not on budget committee, uh, but I'm trying to, to get this approved. I put it on the agenda. There's a time frame on this. Um, their CDBG provided some uh, funding to help with getting laptops for training and for uh, building inspection purposes. Uh, they were provided a grant to us in the amount of $2,000. I would request that you all amend and appropriate that to 34014700012. Have a motion to. Well, the, the laptop would still be ours. It'll be in our department. It's in our name. So uh, it, it'll, it'll be with us. I have a motion to amend and appropriate $2,000 through the Department of Housing and Community Development Virtual Training Support Program to 3401-470012. So moved. Have a motion, have a second. Second. Any question or discussion? And then we'll do a roll call vote, Mr. Terry. Aye. 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 So approved. Next on the agenda is Spielman Bond Council. Mr. Barry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You all have a proposal here from Webster Day. Uh, to serve as bond counsel for us. Um, we've had uh, initial meetings with Davenport and, and Mr. Day. As you all are aware, we're looking at two options. One, uh, a bank, uh, a direct bank RFP, and then we're also looking at a uh, loan through the Virginia or bond issuance through the Virginia Resource Authority. Um, Mr. Day's proposal at this point in time is to help us um, at the cost shown uh, in getting all the documentation that we need and then once we know which process we're going with or both processes we're going with he will provide us with a lump sum not to exceed cost uh, like is historically done but at this time there's no way to know it's going to be 5,000 for this or 6,000 for that because he doesn't know which option we're going to take typically the are, are smaller two four million dollars have been in the eight to ten thousand dollar range for bond council services um staff's recommendation is to go ahead and approve uh spillman thomas and battles proposal uh to represent us as bond council to assist us in preparing the documentations uh for these proposed issuances entertain a motion to approve spillman thomas and battles proposal Make that motion. Have a motion, have a second. Second. Have a motion, a second. Any questions or discussion? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote, Mr. Smith. Aye. 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 So approved. Next on the Agenda is vacation of right away. Mr. Bear, will you summarize that? For those that have been on the board for a while and those that are, I can't remember if we did one recently, I don't know if it's been since you all have been on, on the newer members have been on board or not, but um, the Code of Virginia provides ways for you to vacate right of ways and, and ordinances. Tip of, 
typically the way that the county has done it to vacate right-of-ways. Max Meadows is a community that has a tremendous amount of right-of-ways and alleyways on paper maps um, that uh, never were developed into actual roads. Um, over the past few years, the board has, has vacated several of those alleyways. You have another request here uh, from a landowner to vacate uh, the, the property. You have a map on page 81 uh, that shows this, and it's, it's the property owned by Emily S. Krieger and showing that she owns all sides of this. Um, in order to do this, an ordinance has to be prepared and a public hearing has to be held to do so. I would uh, ask if the board is interested in pursuing this vacation of, of right of way and alley um, to uh, request the county administrator prepare, I mean, county administrator, the county attorney prepare uh, the respective ordinance and that we hold a public hearing at the no earlier than the September 8th Board of Supervisors meeting. Have a motion or entertain a motion to set a public hearing for what date? September 8th at the earliest. So moved. Have a motion, have a second. Second. Any questions or discussion? Yeah, that mobile home that's there, is that that's in the right of way in the septic system, didn't it? Somebody else? It's uh it's on her property. The septic system's on her property. The mobile home just actually extends into the right of way. It, it is not developed. Um, it, if you look at the map on um, page 81, you'll see where it says Reed Street right there. Nothing else accesses or uses that right of way. Uh, it does continue to the um, northwest there, all the way up. Uh, the property it shows owned by the Tates uh, coming out on Blades Trail Road, uh, Road up there. But they do not use this portion of Reed Street nor the the twelve foot right of way alleyway between the properties. Where is this located? Ramsey Avenue. Where is that? This is um, east of. Um, if you turn at the post office and head towards Ramsey Mountain Road, it's back in there. Any other questions or discussion? Here, no, we'll do a roll call vote, Mr. Smith. Aye. 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 So approved. Mr. Chairman, there is one more request, and no action is needed to take on it at this time. At the time of the ordinance that is adopted, you can take that. The board has a policy that indicate that adopted years ago that indicates that in the case of uh, it's vacating the right of way, the landowners purchased the right of way, and that's it's back from the locality. The last five or six of these that we have done have actually been undeveloped right of ways that the landowner has maintained for all these years, and the board has waived Late. that that's in the process. So, no sense in waiving it now until we know if you're going to take action on it. But that is a request that is in there as well that to be taken up when that when the, when the ordinance is considered. I thought the last one I can't remember when we done, but yep. I thought that's what we did. So. Anything else under new business, Mr. Bear? Uh, no, sir, Mr. Chairman. That's all. Move on to reports. First on the list is COVID-19 update. Mm -hmm. Mr. Crawford. Dr. Crawford. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of responsibility these days. All right. So today you got your emails. Um, we have been going back and forth just a little bit. We lost two or three. Uh, those were Ivanhoe uh, area on the county line. We lost those to Grayson County. Uh, so our numbers decreased this week and increased to two eight, uh, 118, sorry. Um, we are um, still at the three deaths. Um, we are at 59 active cases, 57 recovered cases. Um, and, and VDH does not show this, 
But what we're doing, and, and we've passed emails back with VDH, they're behind on their uh, releasing their isolation numbers. Uh, these are numbers that are past a, a month behind now are considered recovered numbers uh, for all of their data and for, for everything. So that's how we are getting our active numbers. Um, the testing in, in Wythe County, uh, as of 8-4, uh, which was last week, uh, we've been at 5% positive of all that's been tested, uh, which is, is, is one of the better numbers in the, in the region. Uh, the region as a whole, as of today, was 10.3%. Um, and those are counties just, just like Smith, uh, Carroll, Bland County. Um, they've had an increase in positive testing, uh, so they've raised that number up pretty well. Um, we are uh, getting, getting passed uh, in, in numbers by those counties, Smith, Tazewell, Russell, uh, Lee County are all outpacing us at this point, uh, but we still need to take our, our precautions as, as we have been. Um, the health care or the health district has been showing a decrease in our positive numbers in health care workers. Um, and we are still working on uh, a purchasing of supplies for those health care work, uh, health care workers. But uh, with the supply lines like they are, we, it is a unique uh, situation at this point. So we're uh, buying 10 from here, 10 from here to get, get our numbers. So, uh, but we are trying to help out as much as we can. And, and the last thing I want to put on there is, um, well, besides the numbers that I gave you, of course, those are the breakdown of the Wythe County numbers uh, by day, also by month, and, and, and just uh, what our numbers are right now. But next Monday, or next uh, Thursday, we'll be having a virtual LEPC, which is the Local Emergency Planning Commission meeting. Um, it, and if anybody's interested in that, I can send that information out to you. Uh, but we're going to discuss some of the COVID stuff and some of the, uh, some of the things that we are going to plan coop plan uh, or continuation of operations plan things like that at that meeting so if anybody's interested if anybody has any questions anybody have any questions for mr crawford will you send me the meeting information please mr crawford i sure will thank you curtis and and, and i know you get tired of hearing this and I, I know you're just a messenger but when are they going to get these numbers updated? So, and the email I sent you, um, they were talking about being pretty far behind, and they admit that they're behind on getting those numbers. Um, with the increase in Smith County and and uh, the possible increase in Blaine County, um, they she admits that she's been they've been pushed to the to the edge on, on getting those these information out. Um, she said that she would be trying this week to, to catch up on that, uh, if, if at all possible. I mean that's you know I'm not I know I'm preaching the choir and I'm not going to get on that soapbox again but it's kind of important to people right you know the correct numbers I mm -hmm. mean, yeah. and we've we've put that out I mean these numbers are coming to us for our first responders uh, that way that we know where they're going into so it's very important that we have those I mean that's when that when that recovered number stays the same for you know, two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, there's enough conspiracies out there. Let's give them honest numbers. Right. Um, are you planning on leaving? No. Uh, I, there's a few other things coming up. Okay. Because I've got something, but I'm not sure if it falls under your wheelhouse, but I was going to bring it a little bit later. Okay. Just hang out. Does anybody else have anything for Mr. Crawford? Sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Mr. Crawford. Moving on to United Way of Southwest Virginia. Mr. Barry, would you like to explain this program? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, obviously, as you know, the, the United Way of, of Witt County uh, has dissolved. We are now within the service area of the United Way of, of Southwest Virginia. Um, they have sent to us this memorandum of understanding um, basically for us to agree to um, with them uh, for addressing this COVID and basically uh, it, it's gotten their responsibility to them, their commitments, but basically if, if they come across any COVID resources or anything that they are doing throughout their service area, this memorandum of understanding would allow them to do those services in with County. So, um, 
obviously that has been a growing organization um, and, and covering lots of Southwest Virginia. And uh, I recommend um, authorizing staff to uh, sign this memorandum of understanding. Entertain a motion to Mr. authorize. Mr. Chairman, I would just interrupt just for a minute. Uh, I did not get an opportunity to talk to Stephen about this thing. Um, I don't like the wording of that document. <laughs> I think it, in, in Section 3 where it talks about responsibilities, I don't think it lays out those, those responsibilities as Stephen explained them. Um, Would you all postpone and, this and until I'd the like next to, meeting? If you could have some time, and I apologize for putting Stephen on the spot. I didn't talk to him earlier about that. But no problem. I, I think the it's always a lawyer. I don't like that word. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if we could just have a little bit more time to review that agreement and talk to United Way to understand what we're committing to and what they're telling us they're going to do. Pass it by. Thank you, Mr. Farley. Next is the Health Equity Pilot Program. Hang on, that's when the wife start talking. <laughs> what you say? Ask me anything on this one before I start talking. That well. Before you get to the hey, when the lawyer <laughs> tells you to hold up, hold up. Based on my experience, up. hold up. The brakes on. You there. Uh, Mr. Crawford was contacted um, uh, by the state agencies on this. Um, they are, are basically doing a health equity pilot program, and this has been done uh, throughout several localities throughout Virginia. Um, they are basing it on, uh, basing this program on trying to get um, supplies to those that are in need. Um, uh, Ms. Uh, Kim, Ayers from the DSS set in on a conference call that we have with this. And basically, um, they are willing to provide, Mr. Crawford can jump in here at any time, but basically, they'll provide hand sanitizers and masks and information uh, that they will send to us, either 5,000 or 10,000 of these items. And then we have to at least provide plastic bags or something other to and volunteers to organize, put this stuff in, and then get it distributed out to those in the community that uh, can, can use it, uh, that may not have it. I know it doesn't sound like a lot. It does take coordination to do so. Um, Ms. Ayers has indicated that they think their staff could get some volunteers and get some community service help that they've got to help uh, bring these items in. Mr. Crawford has worked with a local church. It indicates they probably have room to help bring this in. I've also talked with Hope Ministry Center about possibly coordinating it. Some of the, the hand sanitizers and masks could actually be incorporated in with their Hope Packs uh, that go out in the process. So um, if, if you all would like to uh, proceed with this project, we just, uh, we just wanted to confirm with you all um, approval with proceeding with it. We're hoping that we're able uh, to get bags donated. Uh, that's our primary thing, getting, you know, and I'll just use a Walmart type bag or something like that, like the Hope Ministry Center does, or even work with them on what they get for Hope Packs in some way of using those types of bags. Worst case scenario, we gotta buy some boxes of plastic bags to put these in. So do you, do we need to take action? And unless you, there's not really an agreement to agree to unless you all have any objections to it. Staff will go ahead and advise them to, to go ahead and send us the supplies. Anybody have a problem with it? Okay. Yes, Probably got a closet at my house I can clean up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Moving on to um, staff reports. Have the phone system, Mr. Patrick. Our <laughs> newly knighted IT coordinator, Mr. Catcher. Yes. So the phone system is up and moving. We. Uh, the RFPs were reviewed late February, I think, and then, of course,
COVID hit and kind of slowed everything down a whole lot. We finally got an order placed early June, and um, by the end of June, we had a contractor on site here. We've got the base programming for the network switches that are required, for the control units that are required. That stuff's all mounted in the closets. It's racked up and ready to go. Uh, we needed some connecting fiber optic cables and components. That's ordered, should be here uh, early next week and get that connected. Um, cabling was a little bit slower to get started, but that got started on uh, August the 4th. They are speculating that they will be done cabling those three buildings by the end of August or early September. Again, I take that with a grain of salt. You don't know what you're going to run into when you're in the ceiling or in the floor trying to run cables. So, you know, that's a best case scenario if they're done by the end of August. I would, I would lean more toward mid-September when those guys are done. After that, we bring the contractor back and we finish the uh, configuration of the uh, system, place the devices, turn up the... Uh, uh, take the lines from the old system, plug it into the new system, and turn up the new phones. That I'm anticipating by the end of September. We'll be on a new phone system by then. And when you're talking configurations, basically, if Department X wants a phone tree or if they want it, however they want to set that up, that the company has that layout. Exactly, exactly. I've, I've talked to most of the departments. Some of them are... Uh, a little slippery trying to get hold of the folks and, and nail them down to a time that we can actually plan what they want. The system's fairly robust. We can have, you know, an, an old-fashioned switchboard. We can have an automated attendant. Um, you know, we can have different different ways calls come in. You know, we could place a phone for all of you and a call come in here and they're all going to ring at one time. Or they'll start here and, you know, if it doesn't answer, it'll ring around the room until somebody picks the phone up. However we want it to work. So that's where the interviewing process. I've got... One more, one more group that I've got to nail down and, and get. I've talked to them a couple times, and just I need to really get an understanding of what they want because it's been in passing. Um, but uh, that all happens when they come back, and then once that's done, um, you know, then we pull the cables from the old system, plug them into the new system, new system's live. I assume there's going to be some type of training. There will be training. Are you doing that, or is the company doing that? I am. Everyone's invited. I don't see how we're going to be able to train everybody in the couple of days of training that they've got offered. I'm going to train the trainer kind of thing. And then, you know, when when we go live with the system and say, we roll down to your department and say, okay, guys, get around. This is, this is how this new thing works. And then uh, the way I roll, I'm not going to let you out without some kind of piece of paper with instructions on it anyway that gives you some basic guidance on, you know, how to forward your phone, how to get your voicemail, stuff like that. Well, if you need suggestions on making an idiot proof, see uh, Mr. Crawford or Miss Lane, they've done a good job on those radios. It's good to know. <laughs> I, like, I like people to review my stuff. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, Anybody have any questions for Mr. Catcher? How's everything else going? Staying busy. I was coming into work this morning, going over projects in my head, and it's like, got to do this, got to do this, got to do this. So that's a, We've that's not a filled way to be. another IT position. No, it is advertised. Um, I don't know how many applications we have. I do know one individual that I've already had discussions with before previously has expressed a strong interest in that position. So. Hopefully, within another week or two, we'll have that position filled, or at least offered to that individual. And when are we getting new microphones? Again, I was sitting back here looking around the room thinking, how can I bring this in here to get this system updated? I would like to get new cameras, new TVs. Um, we've talked about it in the past. Um, I would like to bring that in. The TVs are the biggest thing. The, I want a larger monitor. I mean, these are 40-something, 50-somethings. I'm thinking 65s or 70s, so they're going to hang down a little bit, but you'll be able to see them. It's the key, you know. You can sit in the back of the room and still see what's going on. I just want a microphone that does it. 
doesn't pop and crack. It doesn't pop and crack. It's, it's not very COVID safe for you all to be sharing microphones That's, with the planning commission. Yeah. So we are going to look at new desk mounted microphones, whether it's wired or wireless, um, to tie back into the system to assist with that. Well, if the governor's going to make everybody wear a mask, it fogs your glasses up so you can see better with the same inch. Yeah. I would assume. <laughs> Anybody else have anything else for Mr. Kathy? Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm, thank you. Thank you. Moving on to the radio system or 911 Director of Emergency Communications, Ms. Lane. Thank you. The radio system. Um, I put in a report. I'm trying to get a report to you guys about every two weeks to let you know what's going on. Um, right now, uh, I just talked to my radio tech this morning, and he just finished up with Speedwell. Um, everything should be really strong out there. Y'all will let us know. Um, all the testing that we did is, is very good. Um, I know that in my report, I explained what we did. I don't know if you guys have been had a chance to read it, but basically, when it was on Sand Mountain, they were getting a lot of white noise. And we tried to fix that issue by move them, moving them down into Speedwell. And that fixed the noise problem, but then their coverage area, it turns out, is terrible. Um, and then with all the growth of the vegetation, it fuzzes up the line even more. Um, so what we did was a hop. So we go now from Pine Ridge, we go up to Sand as a hop, and then it goes down into Speedwell. It takes all that white noise out, but it allows for them to get a much better communication on their radio. Um, we're all set to go digital with it. I'm going over training uh, to put that on paper this week, and then Curtis and I will be setting up a time probably at one of their, their fire meetings so that we can go ahead and get their radios programmed. Um, Ivanhoe is pretty close. Um, we've applied for a a frequency for them to have their own channel because in the past they've shared with Max Meadows. Um, so we're applying for their own frequency. Um, we also applied for a license to get Max Meadows up on Hamilton's Knob, which was recently approved. Um, as far as rural retreat, they're pretty much good to go. We're gonna replace the antennas on the water tower so that we can get them a, a, a much stronger signal and then they're ready to be reprogrammed. So we're right, we're right at the very edge of getting the, the radios reprogrammed to go digital. Um, as far as Big Walker, we finally got in touch with somebody from Big Walker. Uh, they sent us out a, uh, an application for, to repermit. Um, the site was originally in the sheriff's name. Um, we're re re redoing that permit to have it go into the county name and then see if we can get that extended. I think it goes until 2027. We're gonna to try to get that out a little further. Um, and then we'll be we'll be ready at Big Walker. And that's, if y'all have any questions or any clarifications as far as the radios go or repeaters or anything, I can try to answer them for you. Darlene, on the, on the digital, on the radios, or not really radios, but when you talk about flipping the digital. I know the radios can work analog or digital. What about the pagers? Your pagers are going to, the pagers are going to work uh, analog. Eventually we can go to a digital paging, which is going to mean that some of the agencies are probably going to have to update their pagers. But right now we're staying analog on their pagers. Um, and as a backup, because we have to work with everybody outside the county, uh, rural retreat has to go into Smith County. Smith County sometimes will come over and assist. So um, when we're setting up their digital side, they're also going to be able to go analog. It's going to allow for the other agencies that are not digital to still be able to communicate with responders on scene from, from within our county, if that makes sense. But it, well, and the reason I ask you to talk about the, the pager issues, if, if the the digital or switch to digital fixes the coverage area but we're going to have to replace pages eventually to get that. eventually yeah. anybody else have any questions for Ms. Lane 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Moving on to budget committee. Let me get up here where I can read. <laughs> now you want a seventy inch screen. I know I shouldn't say it. <laughs> That's what my eyes fixed. <laughs> Uh, the budget committee met on August 4, 2020 and made, and made the following recommendations. Amending and appropriating $22,820 from the remainder of the Wythe County WCC's FY20 uh, allotment. Coming from a committee that doesn't need a second, any questions or discussion? <clears throat> Mr. Baird, did they ever contact us? Well, I guess my question is what they need the money for. That uh, was one of the things I, I talked about in the committee meeting. They just sent a letter to us requesting that that they had not um, requested the funds at the end of the last fiscal year. Obviously, one of the things was do the graduation ceremonies and some events have gone on. Uh, but their letter did not. I mean, I mean, I guess my argument is uh, the public school system returned their one point whatever million. Does anybody else have any questions or discussion? No, I'll, I'll agree, sir. Uh, we're, we're thinking the same way. And I'm in if they need I mean if they need it they need it I just had you know like you they they didn't have graduation which they typically you know is expensive and all that and, but any anybody else having questions or discussion is that is the date right on that November 19th <laughs> on their letter they received their check from the 19th 2020 That be. Yeah, that, that, they, re, they requested and received the first half in November of, no, <laughs> November of 2019. Yeah. Right. I was thinking I'd took a nap. Yeah. <laughs> they received their first half last November and did not request the second. Any other questions or discussion? You know, we'll do a roll call vote, Mr. Smith. Aye. 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 No. Aye. Aye. No. So approved. I'm ending and appropriating the following amounts for parks and rec recreation. $7,500 to account 7105-443020 high tide system. $4,204 to account 7110-443020 balance of the high tide system. $360 account number 7110443020 rental of trencher for river retreat lake and eight hundred dollars uh, account 7110-470010 ice machine coming from coming from committee doesn't need a second any questions or discussion i will just indicate all of these actually should have been in the carryover report that you all approved in uh june 30th of last year um, I had a whole folder of carryover reports, and this was underneath of it and not in that folder. So uh, that and one other one that's on here should have been in the carryover. But at this point in time, we have to amend and appropriate. So request. I thought we, I that. Thought we talked about the ice machine before. <laughs> we had. It was in there. Yes. Uh, anybody else? Question or discussion? Do a roll call vote, Mr. Terry. Aye. 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 <clears throat> Amending and appropriating $5,000 to account 31021-461260, a donation from Pilot Travel Centers for the purchasing um, protective equipment. Any questions? Go ahead, Go ahead. No, you're good. Any questions or discussion? Here, now we'll do a roll call vote, Mr. Smith. Aye. 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 Aye.
transferring seven hundred and seventy three uh, dollars from the concealed weapons permit seven zero zero two three to the police activity fund one three zero zero three for neighborhood watch signs and to amend and appropriate the same to account three one zero two one dash four six one two six zero any questions or discussion I only got one why in the world was shipping so expensive on those were they trucked in but a hundred and thirty some dollars I mean I could have got it on a tractor and trailer for that price <laughs> any other questions or discussion here then we'll do roll call vote Mr. Terry aye aye, aye. I'll abstain abstain aye aye so approved Amending and appropriating sixteen thousand two hundred and sixty dollars to account three one zero two one dash four seven zero zero one two to complete the sheriff's computer project. Any questions or discussion? Now we'll do a roll call vote, Mr. Smith. Aye. Aye. Abstain. Abstain. Aye. 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 So approved. Amending and appropriating one thousand two hundred and twenty four dollars to the school resource. 3102 for the purchase of two body cameras. Any questions or discussion? Do a roll call vote, Mr. Terry. Aye. 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 Abstain. Abstain. Aye. Aye. So approved. Amending and appropriating $16,555 to account 31021-470030 for the second payment of the Enterprise Vehicle Agreement by the board in FY20. Any questions or discussion? Do a roll call vote, Mr. Smith. Aye. Aye. Abstain. Abstain. Aye. 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 So approved. Amending and appropriating $938 for the remainder of the Family Resource Center FY20 allotment. Any questions or discussion? No, do a roll call vote, Mr. Terry. Aye. 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 So approved. Anything else under Budget Committee? That's all, Mr. Chairman. Moving on to Board of Supervisors reports, Mr. Smith. Uh, the only thing I have is uh, I sent a letter. I think I copied Mr. Bayer on it uh, to Mr. Fowler. Uh, the residents of Whispering Pines was wanting speed limit signs put up, and uh, Mr. Fowler has responded back, and I have shared that to the residents. Anything else, Mr. Smith? That's all. Mr. Cook? I have nothing. Ms. Lawson? The only thing I have at this time is I will say I've actually had several people in favor of the solar. Um, I really don't know what it's called. I've been talking about it for two weeks. Solar project, I guess I'll call it. And I will also say, I didn't see Mr. Walk back there earlier. I'm not sure if you were there earlier, but if you all, I would encourage you all, if you do have questions on how the planning commission, you know, the discussion they had, he would, I'm sure he would be more than happy to talk to you about it. Because they did put a lot of time into it. But anyway, that's all I have. Mr. McRoberts. Anything new on the Burns Spring building plan? Why don't you be scrubbing at you? It, it is, uh, we're still working with the engineering firm on it, on the, the cost proposal on the layout and of it. Uh, I've got the document we drew up. I have your document of what you marked up that they, the residents there shared. Uh, for them reviewing uh, to come up with cost estimate. Okay. Another thing. Let's do something with that. I don't care what you have to do with it. But that's very <laughs> annoying. I was going to throw the cost I was, too. Come in here next week and have Mr. Microphone. <laughs> <laughs> anything else? Anything else, Mr. McRoberts? Uh, Mr. Roberts, that you you did inquire about speed limit signs, uh, and I don't know if they copied you back on the email, but uh, they do have a. They've had a previous study done on the Walton Furnace Road, and they are going to go check what signs are up or not up, and get signs posted. So there shouldn't be speed limit signs on there. I don't remember the speed they said, but there shouldn't be speed limit signs on there. That's 
sir. Mr. Horney. Uh, I had contacted Stephen about uh, tire day. Uh, Farm Bureau just needs to know if we're <laughs> going to do it and they were going to participate. They have to, I think they have to send their information for their newsletter by the 1st of September. So if we can figure out anything. Yeah, I, I guess I'll, I'll ask for you all some, some advice of how you want to do that. Um, typically, uh, the, the expense to the county, uh, we usually get a trailer and then um, Farm Bureau pays for a trailer and we usually get six, seven, eight, nine, ten trustees to come out because you're loading 3,000 tires a day and it takes a lot of labor and a lot of time to get them in and you they've really got to be stacked in a pattern in order to maximize your number of tires in there. We cannot get any trustees to do this. Our three buildings and ground staff cannot stack 3,000 tires in two trailers during that day. Billy is trying to check with the people that provide the trailers and see if maybe they can do it over a week where we do a few hours every evening or something like that in the process of trying to do it. The other option is for us to try to go out and get some temporary help that you all would have to agree to pay for. Um, I, I mean, I don't know that the Farm Bureau has anybody that would want to come and help volunteer in the time of doing that. But we haven't set a date yet, and, and he's got a very legitimate concern. I mean, if, if we want to do it, and I don't know if we can even get temporary help to come in and, and do it during that time frame. But um, we would probably either have to pay for some, some help to come in or try to spread it out over several days. If you can find anybody. That's, Mr. Bowers was sort of concerned as to whether he could find somebody, and even if he did, after the first hour of stacking tires down there, he said they may decide it's not worth it in the process of standing in the back of a hot trailer and doing it. And the trustees don't have much choice. Um, so it's, it's a good service. It's a needed service. We can postpone it until next year when we should be able to get trustees, or we can try to come up with another option of doing it this year. Well, I think if we don't do it this year, we're going to have to double up next year. I would contact Farm Bureau and see what the, if they would have any options. I mean, I don't know if they would be willing, some of them, to help or... We, we had that discussion right at the end of last week about that. Um, and I don't have a good solution for you short right. of trying to find. I mean, the best solution to me is not ideal and probably not for the Farm Bureau and some others would want to hear would be to look at postponing this until next spring and see right. if we can get trustees help. But if you all would like, we'll try to proceed that and I'll check with Farm Bureau or see if there's any other options uh, that we can do. I mean, I, I think if we don't have any other options, but, I mean, postpone it, but just, we're probably going to have to do two next year because yeah. like a, if we don't give people a place to take the tires, we know where they end up. Yep. I agree. In front of Gene's house. <laughs> but anyway, I'll, I'll talk to the Farm Bureau. Anything else, Mr. Uh Yeah. Can you contact VDOT? Uh, I know Fleming Road needs to be scraped. It's got ruts. <laughs> oh, were they out there today? Okay, never mind that then. All right, taken care of, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing is we have a water committee meeting Tuesday. Yes, sir. I will not be able to attend. I have a bus meeting that day since they changed it from today. So you either need to postpone it till later on in the day or someone else can attend in my place. Or you can just say we don't have anything to talk about and we'll just not have one. No, we've got a few things that we need to talk about. Um, would, could, y could the water committee members do it in the afternoon? I can do it probably any time after 1 or 1.30 or maybe 2. Would, would, and I guess JPS meetings at six o'clock that night we're meeting at like four o'clock or something that evening work yeah good because you'll be here for jpsa well, 
your water committee also on King Third. Who's on the water committee? Uh, Mr. Cook. Building and grounds. What day? Buildings and grounds are supposed to be the same day. What day? Tuesday the 18th. I'm going to be out of town that whole week. Well, let's look at move buildings and grounds to, well, would buildings and grounds in the evening work better for the buildings and grounds committee meeting? I can do it in the evening. Off the top of my head, I can't remember who's being GU. I'm building the ground. Who else is building the ground? You won't be here. Are you building the ground? Coley. Coley, Coley is. You want to do a four o'clock and a five o'clock buildings and grounds, and then uh, or three o'clock and four o'clock? Does that work for you all? Four is better for me. Four is better for you? Okay. Um, <clears throat> We'll do water at three and building the ground at four, and then that gives you time to go eat before the PSA meeting. You got that, Martha? If you will revise our calendar and let everybody know. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Corey? I believe that was it. I'm glad. <laughs> Carry my calendar, <laughs> Mr. Terry. <laughs> I just want to say thank you to uh, to Martha and Mr. Bayer and uh, and the board for all the condolences and well wishes and the flowers that was sent to uh, to our family during the passing of my grandmother last week and the services yesterday. Uh, several of you guys attended and I appreciate that and I really appreciate the like I say the private conversations and the and the thoughts and the text messages and the prayers. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. My family really appreciates it. So that's all I've got tonight, sir. I think. Uh anybody to ever met Grandma Terry knew what kind of person she was uh, probably the oldest person I, I ever met that would still ride a jet ski absolutely <laughs> well yeah. uh, absolutely yeah 93 years old was a member of the same church for 80 years anything else Mr. Terry that's all I have sir um, I got a couple of things, uh, and, and Curtis, I, like I said, I don't know if this falls under your wheelhouse or uh, all other duties as assigned, but I've had a bunch of people contact me about the aerial spraying. Um, I, I know it's regulated by the state and the federal agencies, but can we look into that? And, I, I got <laughs> And this is private landowner. This is not the, 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 the no, it's it's private it. farmer that's doing it. So I don't know. I think you're talking about the VDACs on what they're doing. Yes. No, this and, is. Uh, but VDACs controls. I yeah. mean, all, all the all the spraying like that's got controls. Yeah. Um, but you know, I I personally, you know, we got a lot of watershed. With County runs into our water sources. I mean, I, I'd like to personally know what they're spraying. I mean, I know what some farmers spray their corn with, and that's herbicide or whatever. They're just pollinating it. But, you know, they're kind of worries me, and then I understand these people's concern because, you know, back in the 90s, I mixed up a lot of Roundup, sprayed a lot of Roundup, greatest thing in the world. What did we find out now? I dropped dead. Y'all call that eight drink drink drink. Drink. <laughs> uh, But if you could just check into that, yeah. let's know. Um, and Mr. Bear, I'd sent you an email about having the department heads come. I never got a response. I did get some feedback from some other board members that liked that ideal. Well, that's. I, I want to talk to you all about it tonight, and that's the reason why I had a couple department heads come tonight. Um, I was waiting to see what feedback the rest of you all have with it. I. I didn't see any other response coming back for it. Um, that's why, you know, I, I thought we would decide if you wanted half of one meeting, half the other, or do it like this with two or three of them at each meeting with topics or things that are going on, and particularly if there's certain things you all want to know about, look at having them uh, come to the meetings in the process. So. You know, I think 
I mean, I certainly don't want all of them um, showing up at the same meeting, but I mean, I think uh, I think a little more communication. Plus, you know, like Mr. McRobert said, you know, we get complaints from citizens that they can answer here on the spot versus, you know. And certainly, if you get any complaints from citizens, I would ask you to get them to me first of all just so we can try to see what we can answer in the process and not you know, be trying to put them on the spot in the process. Anything we can look at and address, we'd like to do that. Well, when I say complaints, I mean yeah. questions. I mean, ultimately, it, um, I guess complaint was the wrong word, but, you know, versus we come to you with our questions and then it's two or three days a week. You know, it's the whole yep, discussion we've had about how much is on Stevens' plate. Um, anybody else have anything on that? How many? I should. I know I should know this, but off the top of my head, I don't. How many department heads? Oh, uh, I like. I don't remember the number off the top of my head. I actually just had Martha uh, update it to show our new names on it in the process. Uh, but basically, you're looking at about nine department heads that we have across there in the process. So so. I was thinking ten. So. I mean, just split it, I guess. Is that too much, or should we do, like you said, I don't know, I'm kind of like Mr. Smith, at least, you know, I mean, Curtis is always here, but at least, you know, Curtis would know I, I'm i busy on the first two, or the first meeting of every month, or, you know, at least they know somewhat of a schedule. We can, we can certainly set it up in, in that manner, uh, just... I mean, right now, IT's got several projects going on, but a lot of times there's not any general report coming from IT on things going on. Um, and, you know, I, I just hate having staff come in, and especially during, you know, it, depending on how we go with COVID times. I'm hoping we're passing all of this and we're going to be good coming in and setting our, everybody in here if we need to. But, you know, we can yeah. rotate them in. They can they can do like they do now, uh, wait until it's time to come in and do that. But, We'll certainly look at, at putting him on the agenda. Now, if there's certain topics in particular you all want to address, make certain you let me know, and we can move them around on the schedule because there's things that may be more time sensitive. Uh, there may be a water project or uh, item that needs to be discussed or with the radio project, certain issues that come up on it. And, you know, after a couple of months of it, we might realize that we're having them come sit through this. <laughs> I, I just feel like there's a disconnect since we went to the 6 p.m. meetings. There's a yeah. disconnect between us and the department heads. And like Ms. Lawson said, you know, because once this COVID thing either blows up or dies, Curtis needs to miss a couple of meetings because, <laughs> you know, he's here and every one of them. You know, um, but anyway. And and we might adjust the agenda and put them early on the agenda. I, I, no, I really don't like having them stay out. I mean, I don't mind it. You know, we're... You to, but I don't like them having to wait here until maybe be at the end of the agenda. We can put them early on, and, and yeah. then they can leave in the process. Works for me. Um, and then the final thing is Mount Airy Road, located in Black Lake District, is now surface treated. If you'd like to go visit, those people are tickled to death. I had a lady call me the other day and said her neighbor done a burnout. She went and had a stern talk to him about it. <laughs> So, um, but she wanted me to tell all the board members she'd lived there 20 years and it was the nicest road that's ever been. So, um, Six months, they'll want you to lower the speed limit. Well, the, <laughs> the thing about it is it's a dead-end road. So it don't make, oh, that'll make it worse. One then. way. <laughs> so, but uh, that's all I have. Uh, anything else, Mr. Bear? No, sir, Mr. Chairman. I'd, I'd Y'all just mentioned speed limits, and I will just reference for those individuals that live on the western side of Whitfield, do pay attention that the town of Whitfield has drastically changed their speed limits through there and running 25 miles an hour from CJ's to Route 11. It seems like it takes me another two minutes to get to work yeah. right now. But uh, I'm waiting for Mr. Vault to be sitting there with a the radar gun I'm, to come uh, through in the morning. <laughs> I'm anxiously hoping they've done that because of the huge food city they're going to build. Any, do you have anything, Mr. Farley? I do not. Thank you. Ms. Uh, Collins? 
uh, entertain a motion to go into closed session under Code of Virginia Section 2.2-3711A5, Discussion of Prospective Industry, Project Skyscraper. So moved. Have a motion, have a second. All in favor of 65 saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Now in closed session. Let's have a entertain a motion to certify or ratify the certification. So moved. Have a motion, have a second. Second. Do a roll call vote, Mr. Terry. Aye. 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 So approved. Anything else, Mr. Barry? Mr. Chairman, one thing. update I did set in on a meeting with the um, um, I guess representatives from the Department of Taxation other counties other towns and um, boards that oversee taxation policies for cigarettes um, it's um, a very interesting conversation um, and it's one of those that it's going to take a little bit of work in getting this all set up and doing the, the taxation. Uh, the, I've talked to the town of Whitfield, how they do it. We're just providing little stickers to make certain they go on there to the localities in Northern Virginia that have actually formed boards that oversee that to make certain that all of the taxation, all the stickers are going on, the stamps are going on. Heard the horror stories of the location that sold stamps for distributors to put or for the, the end things to put on there and that they were taking the stamps and cutting them into three because it was a number was on there three different ways or whatever and they'd split stamp three ways and put it on the cigarette tax and figured out the county where the town was losing a tremendous amount of money in that respect so um, just we'll continue staying involved with those meetings but it also may be a regional approach that we look at is there a way to work regionally with several counties in coming up with a stamping procedure uh, and a and a follow-up or someone investigating that in the process they just be working with the sheriff's office and making certain that they have the proper stamps on them but uh, it is a very detailed process and as we work through developments of ordinances developments of the process procedures the stamps or the seals or however you're going to do it would have to be developed but I will forward and share with you all any information that I've got. I'm just saying it's not as easy as the passing a parking ordinance and putting some signs up and writing some tickets on it. It's going to be a little bit more involved, and I think we knew that, but it was just interesting listening to, to them talk about it. Well, and, and that regional or however it might be a good opportunity to reach out to Bland County just because of their limited resources. And have a partnership if nothing else would just be them that's there's and I don't remember the exact title of it but there's a Northern Virginia board that's set up and that's their job that's their function they, they have a staff and they oversee and because I was like well there's only two counties but it's actually it's dealing with the cities and towns and different things and I don't remember how many localities they represent but they said they have no desire to take on every county or things like that in the process but it was an idea that there may be three or four or five regional boards set up to oversee those and work with all the localities in the process. Anything else, Mr. Baird? No, sir, Mr. Chairman. Hope everyone has a good evening. Right. We will we'll be you. in recess until tomorrow at 6 p.m.